This video will talk about the black power formula for uh, uh, related to area and temperature and a constant as to how much power is uh, radiated by a black body and apply it to the sun as a way of coming up with an estimate of the radius of the sun. There are better methods than this method for finding the radius of the sun, but uh, let's work through the, uh, the steps here on how this formula could be used to calculate that uh, uh, radius. So first we have this relationship for a black body, an object where the uh, spectrum does not depend on what material makes up the object, but uh, we have just a connection <clears throat> between the temperature, the area, a constant, as to how much power comes off. There's also a connection between the effective temperature of the black body and the wavelength of the spectrum that has the maximum energy in terms of uh, uh, at lower wavelengths the energy emitted is smaller at higher wavelengths the energy emitted is smaller but there'll be a wavelength where we get the largest amount of energy emitted so we can measure the apparent brightness of the sun and we can measure the distance to the sun. Those two pieces of information can be used to calculate how much power the uh, sun is delivering to space. And that turns out to be 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts. Um, in terms of this 10 to the 26, uh, a trillion is 10 to the 12, so this would be 100 trillion trillion watts. It's a, a huge number and is common for stars. There are some stars that emit more energy there's per second, and there's some that emit less energy per second. The watt is energy per second unit, but that's what we have for the sun. And then roughly the wavelength where the sun um, is brightest, if you want to say that, uh, is around 500 nanometers, where we're getting the most energy uh, delivered and at uh, blue wavelengths, this is in the green region, but at blue wavelengths we have uh, less energy. At the red wavelengths we have less energy, but at green we have the maximum energy output from uh, the disk of the sun. So first thing we want to do is find the effective temperature of a photosphere. And again for black bodies we're going to treat the sun as a black body, that's an approximation, but uh, there's a relationship between that effective temperature and this peak wavelength. And perhaps I should uh, put a subscript here, peak. And now we can do this uh, calculation. The effective temperature is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 meters divided by 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. I need to have the same units um, on this, and sorry I've dropped off the Kelvin, have to maintain that. The meters now cancel when I write the wavelength not in nanometers but in meters, and the nano is 10 to the minus 9. So now we'll take 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3. We'll divide by 500 times 10 to the minus 9. You should repeat that uh, calculation on your calculator, and approximately we get 5800 Kelvin that's our effective temperature for the photosphere of the sun based on using the peak wavelength and assuming the sun is a black body. This is an approximation, but it's, uh, it's useful. Now we want to calculate the, uh, an estimate for the surface area of the sun is our next uh, task. Well, to do that, we'll use this uh, relationship up here, powers and watts. We now have um, the watt number given to us. So, and we have the temperature, so we'll be able to calculate the last unknown, the area. So let's go ahead and put in the numbers. Um, our power, that was given in the problem, 3.8 times 10 to the 26 watts. The constant, the uh, sigma is, Stefan's constant, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth power, and then the area that we're trying to find is there, and then temperature in Kelvins raised to the fourth power. So if you don't have a, 
arbitrary power button on your calculator. Just use the square twice. Put in 5800 and square it twice. That will deliver the fourth power number. But you should work this out on your own calculator. We're going to take this number. We're going to divide by Stefan's constant, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. We're going to divide by 5800 to the fourth power. And doing so, uh, I should check my number here, but I came up with 5.92 times 10 to the 18th square meters is the area. And just for fun, I converted that to square miles. Um, so one mile squared is 1609 meters squared. And I came up with 2.3 times 10 to the 12th square miles. Uh, still a huge number. Um, 2.3 trillion square miles. Completely bigger than the Earth. So uh, that's where I'll stop with that. How do we get the, uh, the radius of the sun? Well, for a sphere, the area is equal to 4 pi r squared. And you can see where we're headed now. We have the number for the area. Pi is a constant. So we'll be able to calculate the radius. And in doing so, so just to make it clear, 5.92 times 10 to the 18th equals 4 pi r squared. We need to take their area number in square meters and divide by 4 pi, and then take a square root of both sides. So I'm going to let you do that. And again, take our area number, divide by 4, divide by pi. After you do those operations, take a square root, and you should come up with the radius for the sun of roughly 6.9 times 10 to the 8th meters. 6.9 times 10 to the 8th meters, and uh, roughly, very roughly, it's a little over 100 times the radius of the Earth. Um, and the sun is completely uh, dominating our solar system for size and mass completely bigger than the Earth. So there we are with an estimate of the radius of the Sun using the characteristics of light from the Sun. The apparent brightness and distance allow astronomers to calculate the um, energy per time being emitted from the Sun, the number of watts. And the relationship for a black body allows us to calculate the uh, area once we know the temperature. And we get our temperature from Wien's Law Wien's law that relates the effective temperature and the peak wavelength. There's a division here, 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by this um, wavelength. Make sure you use meters for the wavelength. So if you have other questions on that, you can ask your instructor. If you do have other questions on astronomy and physics topics, I've uh, made a list of my YouTube videos, and they're annotated a little bit, described. So the astronomy videos might be found at astronomy.gpclements.com, the physics videos at physics.gpclements.com. I hope you find them useful, and be sure to read your textbook and ask your instructor questions.